Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. I do have a quick story for you. So I had created a 24 hour readathon vlog where I was using a timer to time out 24 hours and see how many books that I could read for that vlog. And I ended up getting ready to edit the videos. And turns out that there's a setting on my camera that you can accidentally click next to the record button that turns all of your video into no audio and in slow motion. So all of the video that I had taken for this 24 hour readathon is gone and I can't use any of it. But I did read four really good psychological thrillers. I really wanna still share the four books that I read for the 24 hour vlog that never was. These four books that I'm going to talk about, I highly recommend you read and you check out. They were creepy, they were scary, they left me wanting more, they left me unsettled, I read them and I still think about them and it's been a few days. I thoroughly enjoyed reading these books. I feel like reading these books sparked my reading bug again. I wanna keep reading thrillers. I know that they're creepy, but I love watching thrillers, psychological thrillers, it's horrors, gore. I just like those movies. I like creepy movies and ghosts and paranormal activities. And these books were really fun to read and just kept me wanting to keep reading and I finished them very quickly. If you're wanting some books to get you back into the reading spirit and you enjoy thrillers, these books are for you. I read four books total and some of them were really popular, some of them are new releases, and a few of them were just books that I never heard of before and I wanted to read. So let's get started. This first book that I read is None of This is True by Lisa Jewell. This is a very popular psychological thriller story that has been out for quite a little bit now. This is Lisa Jewell's most recent release, I believe, and it released last year. I picked this book up from Book of the Month, as you can see by their logo. I actually do not love that they put these logos on the covers, but that is for another day of complaining. <laughs> this is a psychological thriller set place in London, and it is about two girls. One is Alex, and she is a famous podcaster. She writes stories about women who have overcome difficult situations or have just done meaningful and powerful things in their lives. And then we have our second main character whose name is Josie. Now Josie is just your average chickadee. She is, I actually forget what she, act, she does for her job, but she ends up meeting Alex at a bar one night because they're both celebrating their birthdays. Then they find out that they both were born on the same day at the same hospital in London. Crazy. Alex thinks that that's just a coincidence, but Josie says that is fate. Josie and Alex keep bumping into each other, and then at one point, Josie reached out, reaches out to Alex and says, hey, can we please start a podcast together? Will you retell my story? Alex is a little confused because she doesn't really know who this person is, but she ends up saying yes, and thus starts a story that Alex had never expected. This book is shocking. It is full of jaw drops. It was a wild ride. What I really do appreciate about the story is that when we read about these specific events, it takes place in present tense and we read from a podcast form of interviews between Josie and Alex. So that's one form of writing that we have. But then we have this parallel writing where we're reading prompts and scripts from a Netflix show about the events that had taken place. So we have these two different styles of writing within this this one story and I had never read something like that before so I really enjoyed that aspect of it. At first I thought it was going to be a little confusing to understand and read and know what I what timeline and time period that I'm reading from but it ended up not being that crazy of a way to read it and I think it added a lot to the suspense and the thrills. I had no idea what was going to happen and by the end of the story, it was bonkers, I gotta say. So the end of the story, you are left not knowing 
what is real and what is not. Hence the name of the story, none of this is true. When you're starting to read a story in a book, do you ever look at the title and you're wondering, huh, I wonder why this is named the way that it is. And then by the end of the story, you are like, okay, that makes sense. And then I read the story and now I'm like, oh my gosh, is any of this true? None of this is true. I got it. <laughs> Overall, this was such a good read, and I honestly think that I would listen to this again. I would love to listen to it in an audiobook format. I think there is going to be pieces that I wouldn't have caught reading it a second time, and I definitely recommend to anybody who likes thrillers, anything that is psychological and suspenseful, and if you want something that's gonna keep you up at night and keep you wanting to read more, that is how I felt when I read the story, and when I was actually doing the 24 hour reading vlog, I read this in one sitting, it was that good. I hope they make this into a movie or a TV show or a short series, because it would rock this world. I also wanted to say that there were very high expectations for me going into this story. This is a super popular book and it's been everyone on Book Talk, Bookstagram, Booktube in terms of popular th thrillers to read and this did not let me down at all. I thoroughly enjoyed the story and I think that the hype is there and it's real and you definitely should pick this up at some point. I loved it. The next book that I read for this non-existent 24-hour readathon was The Night Guest by Hildur Knutstoter, and it is translated by Mary Robinette Kowal. Thank you, NetGalley, for giving me the opportunity to read this ARC and digital copy. This story doesn't actually come out until September, but I wanted to read this short novella. It's essentially only 200 pages. It was very, very short and very quick, but I was excited to read the story and give you my review. So this is a story that takes place in Reykjavik and our main character, her, her name is Eden. And I actually had to look this up because the spelling was a little off. There's a lot of uh, Icelandic terms and words in here that I've never heard of before. And every time I would read Ethan's name in my head, I was very confused, so I had to figure out because I was not pronouncing it as Ethan. I know now though. <laughs> so Ethan, she, one day, she wakes up and she has bruises all over her body, there's blood on her. She's very confused because she doesn't know what happened the night before. She goes to the doctors and talks to her friends and basically they all say get some water, get some sleep, maybe do some yoga, therapy is good for you, and just brush it off and say that this will pass, you just are very stressed out. Ethan is very confused because she's like, no, something is actually wrong with me. And then she starts to spiral and this is a very creepy psychological thriller and very unexpected. It is a short 200 pages which I really appreciate because I finished it very quickly. You don't know what's happening to Ethan and she kind of starts spiraling into this motion of I need to figure out what's happening to myself because no one else is going to help me. She ends up locking her doors. She ends up getting a watch to track her steps and she wears it overnight. And this part is not a spoiler because it's in the back cover synopsis. She wakes up and she finds out that she walked like over 45,000 steps in the night and she has no recollection. And then she starts to get some video cameras and technology pieces to track her during her night and sleepwalking abilities. It just gets creepy and weird. We read in this story and learn that it is common and normally when people sleepwalk, they can harm themselves, they can harm other people, they don't know what's happening and a lot of damage can happen. And so that's what really creeped me out when I was reading the story because things that were happening to Ethan as we're reading the story just were not cool. They were very bizarre. <laughs> Overall, I did enjoy the story. However, I have to say, the ending left me unfulfilled. I just, 
thought it was just not a good ending and I think that the ending could have been better. I still recommend reading the story just because it is so, so, so short. Like I said, it's only 208 pages on your Kindle, so the ebook version. I'm sure it'll be very similar once you get the physical copy, if you do, in September. I'm still glad I read it though, because this is my first translated piece that I've ever read, and Overall, it was still a good experience and it left me with goosebumps. The third book that I read was One by One by Frieda McFadden. I love Frieda McFadden. I am trying to listen to all of her backlog in audiobook format. I just think that those audiobooks are easy, they're short, they're fun and engaging, but also sometimes predictable enough where you can kind of let your mind wander and then come back to it and still know what is happening. I'm sorry if you can hear Mowgli snoring, but I feel bad and I don't want to move him. So there's just going to be some snoring ambiance in the background. <laughs> As you can see by the cover, this kind of takes place in the woods. So this is about three couples that decide to take a week-long road trip to an inn in the woods, just somewhere secluded so they can go fishing, they can relax, they can enjoy their time away from their real lives. Of course, with any story that is about a cabin or an inn and then road tripping into the woods, their car breaks down and things just spiral down from there one by one. That is all I will say. So the story was a little bit predictable just because I feel like I've watched movies like this before. The storyline and plot are pretty similar. If you like Cabin in the Woods, the movie, you would probably like this story. It was fast paced, it kept me on my toes, and honestly, I thought I knew what to expect in terms of what was happening. Wasn't sure if it was a monster or if it was like a human being attacking people. There were bear marks everywhere, so, and they're in the woods, so I just assumed that this might be a whole revenant type of situation in terms of bears. But, wow, Frida got me again. She did it. Again, it was very, very, very good. The ending, I was shocked. I kept gasping because I just did not see it coming. I thoroughly enjoyed the story and actually on Goodreads, it got, I think, above a 4.0 in terms of reviews. So that tracks because this was a really fun one to read. What really irked me was things that are real life and can happen in real life really freak me out i would go glamping i would not go camping if i do go glamping and something like this ever happened it actually could happen like a car could break down and that is what terrifies me the most that is why i was so nervous reading the story but i really enjoyed it and i think this one by one by frida mcfadden was one of her better stories that she's written I really enjoyed it and I highly recommend if you want something that's going to shock you by the end and you're not going to see it coming at all. This last story that I read for my fake 24 hour readathon was Kill For Me, Kill For You by Steve Cavanaugh. Now this book was one of the options for March Book of the Month Club and I picked this just because, I don't know, I've been feeling very in the mood for suspense and thrillers. I just think I was going through a literary fiction phase and I needed a boost of I want to read moments and this did it for me for sure. This book was so good. So the back just says she will kill your worst enemy. All you have to do is kill hers. This is a multi POV story that takes place in New York City. We have Amanda who has gone through something very traumatic in her life. She has a grudge and she needs to take revenge and kill the person who killed her daughter. So that's Amanda. And then we have another girl named Wendy. Wendy is somebody that meets Amanda at group therapy and they decide to make a pact that is kill for you, kill for me. Hence the title, but it's actually kill for me, kill for you. And then we have our other plot line where our main character, her name is Ruth, she gets attacked in her own home and she is hurt brutally and she wakes up from 
all of these injuries in a hospital and she is just trying to navigate post attack and post home invasion terrified for her life and just to be around anybody or even just go back home so we have these two specific plot lines and by the end of it, they just converge into such a good way that I did not expect at all. The story was a little slow for me at the very beginning, like the first 100 pages, but then we pick it up very, very quickly. The multi-POVs that we do get within the story, like I said, we have Amanda, we get Wendy, we also get Ruth, and then we get Ruth's husband's point of view, which is Scott, and then on top of that, we get this police officer detective who is in charge of solving both of the crimes. So it's interesting to read the detective's perspective because the detective is trying to help unravel the story as we are trying to read the story and try to figure out how these two plot lines are, are connected. Steve Kavanaugh did a really good job because I honestly did not expect any of it reading through. And the plot and the pieces that happen within the story is just so cunning and mischievous, especially when one is trying to kill somebody and someone else is trying to kill somebody and then someone else is trying to run away from the killer who's trying to kill them. There's a lot of potential act of killings in here. It's good, it's really good. If you like the movie Strangers on a Train, this is loosely based off of that that story in that movie. I've never watched that movie before, but now I kind of want to, and just so I can see the similarities between what Steve Kavanaugh wrote and he got this inspiration from. I think that would be really fun, but I thoroughly enjoyed this story, and it's just a story that I've never really read before, and it was written so well, and the fact that we have multiple POVs and we don't know what is actually happening and what how the plot line and story is going to end and who's going to get caught you just keep reading and you keep unraveling all of these truths and what happens and by the end of it you're shocked i was shocked and what i really liked about the end of the story is steve cavanaugh leaves it up to us to kind of understand that oh maybe a second book is in the future but also the ending was so good he could just leave it there I would read the sequel. It was very fun. Those are the four books that I read during my readathon that once was, but never will be. Sad. Maybe I'll have to try that again another time. And I definitely recommend all four of those books. They were very, very good. If you end up reading any of these books, please drop in the comments below which ones you're excited to read. And if you have read any of these four books, let me know your thoughts on these books and what you liked or didn't like about them. Let's have a conversation. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.